She turned to her left and moved along the passageway, down the short flight of stairs and into the entrance hall. She paused, wondering whether he had done the same. She glanced right, towards the canteen, and then the other way towards the doors. Through the glass she saw two uniforms, and beyond them the playground, and beyond that the road. The policemen were watching her, their arms folded, and their eyes shaded by the brims of their helmets. There was blood on the floor. She had known it was there, and she had meant to ignore it, because the blood had come after, during, not before. She looked at it anyway. The girl whose blood it was had still been alive when she had shed it. It had run down her arm and to her hand, and from her fingers as the teacher had carried her out. It lay in drops, and in several places it was smeared, as if by a toe, or a heel, or a knee where someone had stumbled. He would not have stopped, Lucia was sure, and so she carried on, not walking on the blood, but not not walking on the blood. The assembly hall was some distance from the staff room. The walk would have allowed him plenty of time to think, to reconsider, to change his mind and then back again. Somehow she knew he had not thought. He had focused on not thinking. As she paced the length of the corridor, she passed classrooms with their doors open and a series of recessed stairwells. She glanced through each doorway and up each flight of stairs, sure that he would have done the same. In her school, she recalled, there had been pupils' work displayed along the corridors, geography projects or charity work or photos from the year-end musical. The walls she passed were bare, breeze block grey. The only markings were from the paint, a darker grey, that the caretaker had used to conceal graffiti. After every other door, there was an alarm switch, and at the far end of the hall, the alarm itself, higher up and encased in wire. Nothing else. There was tape across the doors that led into the assembly hall. The doors themselves were locked. Lucia took her key from her pocket, turned it in the padlock and opened one of the doors. She ducked under the tape and stepped inside. It smelled of plimsolls, rubbery, sweaty, the yield of scores of scrabbling feet. The assembly hall she knew doubled as the gym. There were climbing frames, folded to the walls and locked in place. She shut the door behind her just as he had done. He would have looked to the front, she assumed, at the stage and whomever had been speaking. The headmaster, Travis. Lucia's eyes, though, caught on the climbing frame opposite her, on the ropes that bisected the rows of bars. One of the victims had hauled themselves upright, and used the rope to try and help them escape the onrush of bodies. There was blood on the knot at the bottom, and at intervals were several feet up. At head height, the blood marks stopped.